Hello, everyone. So welcome to Girl Scouts Wellness Wednesday. I have Jacqueline and Emily from the Kellen Foundation today to talk to us. So I'm going to let them go ahead and share some wonderful information with you. Hi, my name is Emily and I'm with the Kellen Foundation here every Wednesday at seven o'clock. Um, just for a quick reminder, the Callan Foundation, we deal in all kinds of mental health. We have everything from individual therapy to family therapy to support groups. Um, we do some advocacy work, resiliency work. Um, we also have a series of virtual villages now that if you need some extra mental health throughout your week, um, you can go to our website and join basically some virtual kind of support groups. So if you need just some extra, it's just been a tough week, um, feel free to check it out. So I have Jackie back with us again tonight, and she has a yet another exciting topic for you guys today. Take it away, Jackie. Thank you, everyone. So today is going to be a session for the kiddos, right? So we're going to be working on mindfulness and what is mindfulness. So um, I'm going to share my screen for a little bit. Um, let's see, make sure, let me know that I get it right. Are we good? Let me know. Um, is it working? Yes, ma'am, it is. All righty. Thank you. All right. So what is mindfulness, right? So mindfulness is something that's a tool to help you calm down. And what does that mean? Like, how do you calm down? So what you are going to do is you pay attention to your body and your breath. And that is a way for you to be able to um, help you calm down. Because when you learn to control your breath, you can learn to control all the other things that are going on in your body. And you wonder how, right? So breathing is your body's special clue to say how you're feeling. And I'll give you an example in our next slide, okay? So in these little pictures that we have, what kind of breathing is going on in these pictures? So you might not even know what the person is feeling, right? But just by looking at their faces and their body and their posture, they might be feeling certain things, right? So their body might be feeling a certain way and then their breasts might be feeling a certain way. So in terms of that, when we're looking at this first picture, what do we think we might be seeing? We see someone who looks maybe a little nervous, a little scared. I'm not sure. Um, put it, you know, maybe if you have a parent or guardian, are you able to write down what they're feeling, right? So what is this person in this first picture feeling? Maybe scared, maybe nervous, right? Maybe you might think of another word. And if this person is scared or nervous, how do you think their breathing might be? Would it be fast? Would it be slow? What do you think? I think it would be slow if they're sad. I think it, it might be slow if they're sad or if they're scared or nervous, it actually might be something else, right? So if you it's think very about fast. Fast. it, My might be fast very fast. fast. Exactly. Like if you have a test or maybe you're doing something for the first time, or maybe you have to meet some new people that you've never met, right? Your heart might be beating fast. And then so the second person. We don't know what they're feeling, but we can just look at what their face looks like and possibly what their body looks like. It looks, do they look sad in this picture? Probably not, right? They look probably mad, 
And then so if someone is mad, I don't know about you, but think about when you're mad, does your is your heart rate slow or is your heart rate fast? What kind of breathing are you having? Is it like this or are you kind of putting your head back or are you more relaxed like this? What is your breathing like when you feel like this? For me, it's usually like deep breaths. Sometimes it becomes fast, but sometimes it's deep breaths. And then this one, when you're happy, your breathing is a little different again, right? Your breathing is what kind when you're happy. Feel free to put it in the comments. I know that when I'm happy, my breathing is just really deep and relaxing. Mm, so it's deep, but it's not the same kind of deep when you're angry, correct? Nope. It's a really slow, like letting a sigh. It's that <sighs> you're, yeah. you're very calm and relaxed and in a good place. And yes. once you're laughing a lot, then it gets a little fast. <laughs> yes, yes. So as you, and then if you're, you know, think something is funny, then your breathing changes again, right? So this is a, thank you, Valerie. These are good examples of showing how, depending on how you're feeling, your breathing changes. But we can change how we feel if we change our breasts. It, so it's kind of backwards in this case, right? So that's what mindfulness is. We're going to learn how to control our breathing so we can learn how we can change how we feel. Okay. So here is an example of something called starfish breathing. Here we have um, something that looks like a starfish and a starfish lives in the ocean, right? And I have arrows here. And so what that means is you can picture a starfish or even you can have your five fingers and those five fingers could be your five legs for the starfish. And so here in starfish, fish breathing, what you do is you breathe in for each time when it says breathe in, breathe out, you breathe out, and then breathe in, breathe out, breathe in. We're going to, and we'll do it together, okay? So this is one tool in mindfulness where you can have, where you can learn to control your breath. So we're going to do it together, okay? So we're going to take a deep breath first, and then we'll breathe in, breathe out. Breathe in, breathe out. Breathe in, breathe out. Breathe in, breathe out. Breathe in, and breathe out. So that's another example of starfish breathing for you. Okay, so what you can do, if you can't imagine your starfish, if you're at school or you're at home and you're feeling angry or upset, you can use what this kind of tool called starfish breathing. You can do the same thing with your fingers. So what you would do is you trace your fingers and you breathe in with one finger up, breathe out with another finger, breathe in with the other side, breathe out and so forth, okay? So that's starfish breathing for you, okay? Now we have another tool called color breathing or breathing in the rainbow. So what does that mean? And there's all different kinds of breathing tools um, he, that we have, but these are the two that I'm gonna show you today, okay? So you see how there's this rainbow? You can imagine the colors of the rainbow and you can, for instance, I didn't color this, but you can have different colors of the rainbow, whatever colors you want it to be, or just the regular rainbow. And what you would do is you, you'd imagine that you're breathing in that color of the rainbow into your own body. And then you'd breathe out. If you, let's say if you're feeling angry, then if you, some people think red would be angry. So think about what color you would associate or that you would use if you would make the feeling a color. 
I use colors that I think, but everyone is different. So um, either Emily or Valerie or anyone on the call, um, if you want to put in the comments, tell me, are these the colors that you also associate with angry or mad or would it look a little different? Maybe some people might say black is the color that they associate with angry or mad. So first, think of the color. I associate angry with red. Uh, I, I associate sad or bad with black. With black. Okay. Okay, good. Black, Thank you. Or the dark color blue, but I definitely black falls into that. Sad. Oh, Valerie on that. That's okay. Exactly what I was about to say. Awesome. So, and so in this case, what you would do is if you're feeling angry or if you're feeling sad, right? So we'll, let's pretend that we're feeling sad. So instead of the blue color, we'll pretend that it's the black color. So what you want to do is you can, so the first color of a rainbow is red, right? But you don't have to make it red, you can make it purple, whatever color you want to feel. If you want to do the colors of the rainbow, you could do red first, or I'm going to do purple. So what you would do is you would breathe in the color that you want to breathe in. So in my case, maybe I want to feel loved or I want to feel relaxed or I want to feel happy. So breathe in the color that you want breathe out the black imagine the black coming out of your mouth again breathe in the color you want breathe out the black and you would do that same thing for all the all the different parts of the rainbow. So you could do uh, red, orange, yellow, green, blue, and you do the same thing over and over until you're at the end of the rainbow. And this is if you wanted to do the rainbow, but you don't even have to do the rainbow. You could just keep on breathing in whatever color that you wanted. So um, Emily, what color were you imagining when we did it? Um, I decided I wanted to be relaxed tonight. Okay. So, day, why you relax? Yes. So did you have this color or do you associate another color with relaxed? Um, for whatever reason, I was picturing like a green for relaxed, which there. I don't know where I got that from, but that's the picture I first went. And that's okay. And that's the reason why it's important for you to know what color that you that uh, that you associate with. So if that's the color that you have, that's the color that um, that you use. And so that's why I didn't really want to use it on the rainbow because I wanted you to try to imagine whatever colors worked for you best. Okay, so that is our color breathing and um, you can use that again at home or at school. And if you're feeling angry or sad, then um, that those are the colors that you can breathe out. When you did it, Emily, did you feel a little bit more relaxed once you kind of imagined your green colors coming in and your black going out? Yes, because then I actually was kind of focusing on that feeling instead of focusing on like the bad feeling. Okay, thank you. And so that is exactly, again, what mindfulness is. It's to focus and concentrate on the feeling that we want instead of the feeling that we don't want. Okay. Uh, oh, go ahead. Yes, Valerie. I like this activity, especially at the end of the day, because you can kind of get your mind off of everything that happened, whether it's at work or school or just a busy day running around, it's a good way to bring all the good thoughts in of comfort and relaxation and being happy and getting rid of whatever was just ugh, throughout the process of the day. Yes, yes. And I think that especially during now with coronavirus, it's especially important because we don't have that separation. Um, you know, for the kiddos, you guys are thinking like you usually have the end of school and then you are able to come home and leave all the feelings that you had at school. Right. But now we don't have that separation. We don't have that way to kind of say, OK, it's the end of the day. So maybe you can use this technique 
like um, Valerie was saying at the end of the work day, but maybe it could be you can put like an alarm at the end of the school day. If it was at 230, then you say, OK, let me do my color breathing or my other kind of breathing. OK. So today I also have um, an example of some tools that you can have also, especially if you have a hard time maybe imagining the colors or something like that. So um, I am going to, I have a list of supplies here, but um, I have instructions here and I've also sent Valerie the, um, the, the link to how to make this. So this th this list is supplies on how to make your own mindfulness tools. I don't know if you could see this. Uh oh, it's not working. There you go. This so my your own mindfulness tool. So you can use a toilet paper roll or a um, paper towel roll. And what you would do is you would decorate it and you would use your breathing to kind of move the things that are attached to this. So as you see here, um, you would want something that flows. So maybe ribbon or streamers or feathers. And again, when we're talking about our breathing, right, we're going to use our, um, our breasts to move this time, whatever it is that's flowing. So it could be the feathers in this case. So I'm breathing in happiness and then I'm watching the feathers move. Sometimes you might not be able to imagine the colors. So all you have to do is pay attention to the different things that are going on. So just paying attention to watching the feathers move or the ribbons move. And then I have another tool called a pinwheel. And I don't know if you guys know, oh, can you see it? Uh oh, oh no. It's not working with whatever I have going on in the background. I might have to turn off the background. I'm not sure. But in this case, here's the pinwheel. With the pinwheel, I would use my breath again to move the pinwheel. Okay. I apologize. I don't know if you can see it very, very well. Can you guys see it? It's kind of, okay. So I would use my breaths again to move the pinwheel. There you go. So that is mindfulness for you. Does anyone have any questions um, that has been in the comments or either Emily or Valerie have any questions? have any questions really in the comments uh, there were quite a few responses to the excitement of what it was like to look at someone and see how they would be breathing and a couple comments about the colors and then we also had somebody joining us from Puerto Rico tonight so oh, cool our knowledge really far and wide tonight so I want to thank both of you for your generous time and your knowledge that you're sharing with all of us to make sure that we are being mindful of what's going on around us and trying to take care of ourselves and stay well and healthy. Um, so I am, I am in deep gratitude and I just wanted to let you all know how much I appreciate it. And we get so much feedback every week on the, the amazingness of this. So thank you both so much for coming and participating with us. And I hope that um, you all have a wonderful afternoon or a wonderful evening. And we can't wait for you to come back and join us next week. I have put the link to the Kellen Foundation. I've also put the link to the activity as well. And if anyone is interested in more of our virtual programming, that link is also in the comments. Thank you so much, Laura, for doing that. And then, of course, with Girl Scouts, if you have any further questions, you can reach out to us at info at girlscoutsp2p.org, or you can call 1-800-672-2148. And if anyone is interested in becoming a Girl Scout, please go to beagirlscout.org. Thank you, everyone. Have a great night. Thank you.